Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. A top Iranian official has just promised a swift and decisive response to Israel's recent activities in Syria. Earlier this week, missiles struck a Syrian base where potentially dozens of Iranian nationals are believed to have been killed. Israel has remained mum on any involvement, and Syrian national media initially blamed the United States, but top U.S. officials say Israel led the operation. Sources inside the White House are quoted saying Israel is actively mobilizing for a war with Iran in Syria. While Prime Minister Netanyahu has denied that he's looking for a war, there is evidence to the contrary. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman was just in Washington where he was allegedly trying to sway the U.S. to join Israel in the event of a war. And on top of that, the Knesset just voted to give Netanyahu emergency powers to declare war in, quote, extreme circumstances, without the cabinet's approval. The shadow war between Israel and Iran in Syrian territory has erupted into a very public one over the last few months. Iran says its so-called advisors are in Syria at Syria's request, but Israel estimates that tens of thousands of Iranian soldiers are inside Syria at the moment, with their weapons aimed right at the Jewish state. One of the biggest unkept secrets in the region is Israel's alleged possession of nuclear weapons. While Israel is not actually a signatory to the Treaty for the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, it's believed widely that Israel does in fact at least possess a nuclear arsenal. This has complicated the treaty's quest for a nuclear-free Middle East, but now in a stunning reversal, the Trump administration has sided with Israel on the matter, saying that Israel should be able to keep its nukes until the rest of the region recognizes its right to exist. Israeli rationale says that you can't separate the topic of nuclear arms from security, especially when certain enemy countries such as Iran, Syria, and Libya are believed to be actively pursuing a bomb despite signing the non-proliferation treaty. For that reason, Israel allegedly developed a stockpile of up to 400 warheads, which, if true, would make it the third largest arsenal on Earth. Past administrations have typically held Israel to the same standard as the rest of the world, though, and publicly asserted that Israel should sign the treaty and be transparent in its own nuclear activity. But clearly, the Trump administration feels quite differently. The treaty is re-evaluated every five years, with the next meeting set for 2020 in Geneva. Some, however, fear that by then, the world may be a very different place with respect to nuclear power. In an Israeli first, President Reuven Rivlin has just landed in Ethiopia for meetings with the Falash Mura community, as well as top leaders in the country including the president and the prime minister. In his meetings with Ethiopian officials, Rivlin plans to deepen cooperation between Ethiopia and Israel across many fields. But with the Falash Mura, a population of Ethiopian Jews whose ancestors were forced to convert to Christianity out of persecution, the meeting with Rivlin is more significant. Though thousands of the Ethiopian Jews have been brought to Israel under the law of entry, they do not technically qualify as Jewish under the law of return and are thus required to formally convert upon their aliyah. But beyond that, thousands more of the Falash Mura are still simply waiting for the trip to Israel to occur. Many families have been divided for over a decade. Clearly, there is a lot riding on this first visit to Ethiopia by a sitting Israeli president. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is touring the Middle East right now, landing earlier in Jordan and now the West Bank, being received by PA President Mahmoud Abbas in Ramallah. Later on, President Abe will return to Israel for meetings with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu as well. Abe planned this trip as more of a booster for energy, trade, and security relations. But much to President Abbas's joy, the Japanese leader also reportedly stated that he had no plans to move the Japanese embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, following suit behind the U.S. and a few others. President Trump's decision to move the United States embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and to recognize Jerusalem officially as Israel's capital has angered many both in and outside the Arab world. The PA has since cut the United States out of negotiations, saying the U.S. is no longer a fair partner in the peace process. And indeed, in the past, Abbas has also hinted that perhaps another country could take the United States' place, even specifically suggesting Japan at one time. It's unclear at this time whether Japan's president has any intentions to mediate Middle East peace or not, but from the looks of this latest visit, he isn't burning any bridges with anyone either. The Bonetzion Prize is an award given in recognition of new and veteran Israeli immigrants who have significantly contributed to Israeli society. An immigrant aid agency, Nefesh Benefesh, has just named seven Olim as this year's winners. The prizes are given according to category, and this year's awards go to Linda Strait for Culture, Art and Sport, Major Keren Hajioff for Young Leadership, Arsen Ostrovsky for Israel Advocacy, Professor Marcia Javid for her work in science and medicine, Kalman Samuels for nonprofit work in the community, Rabbi Dr. Shlomo Riskin for education, 
and finally Morris Kahn for a Lifetime Achievement Award. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs>